I've always considered myself a storyteller, and to give credit where credit's due, I got that gene from my grandma. She instilled in me my love of the dark and compelling, and I took my obsession with all things horror and turned it into a career. Comic books, movies, TV, any format of the genre, I'd done it. But some years back, I realized there was a breed of horror I hadn't explored, one found in the darkest tunnels of the web. So I went searching, which is how I found myself down a good old internet rabbit hole. You know how it goes. I started casual searching the web for real-life horror stories. Then one link led to another till I stumbled upon a little niche of YouTube horror creators. Their videos had clickbaity titles like What Lives in Your Walls and Disturbing Government Experiments, the kind of strange, dark, and mysterious stuff that myself and Mr. Ballin are into. And eventually led us to making this very podcast. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, I went down a wild detour of clip after clip until I found a channel all about cryptids called Monster Max. Monster Max was a duo, a couple named Maxine Moore and Shane Harris. They came face to face with these creatures, within reaching distance of actual legends. Kind of like what I do, but on purpose. But the most fascinating part wasn't the cryptids they covered. Monster Max had become a part of internet lore themselves. You see, something horrific happened to Maxine and Shane. And it all started with one monster in particular. I'm no journalist, but luckily my internet sleuthing led me to one. Nicole Dawes had been a reporter for some big-name publications I won't name. And her beat was technology, especially internet culture. But when I found her, Nicole's resume looked very different She spent the last couple of years writing on some less than reputable sites, conspiracy rags and paranormal journals. But as far as I could tell, she was the most credible source on what happened to Monster Max. So I did what any stranger reaching out to another did on the internet. I sent her a DM. Not a minute later, I got one back. The following morning, among the many open internet windows covering my desktop, Nicole Dawes' face popped up in a video chat. She was hollow-eyed and pale, a far cry from the sleek-looking headshot I'd seen. Though she looked exhausted, Nicole was razor-sharp, charming, with a quiet shrewdness. You see, I'd reached out to her with some questions, but before I realized what was happening, I was the one being interviewed. She asked me about me and my background, and soon I found out we had the same alma mater, Howard University. But before I could fluff things up with small talk, Nicole cut to the chase. She told me the story of Monster Max wasn't what I thought it was, and it sure as hell wasn't what the media reported. It wasn't the rise and fall of some internet stars, or a grisly crime story. To really understand what happened, Nicole said, I needed to know this. Behind all the screens, feeds, and live streams, Maxine Moore and Shane Harris were two people in love, slowly drifting away from each other. But in the end, It was a monster that ripped them apart in more ways than one. It was April 2015. Maxine and Shane had been driving for five hours straight when a sign announced they'd finally reached their destination. Lone Pine, California. Little town, lots of charm. Little was certainly correct. As for charm, Shane figured it must have faded ages ago. Lone Pine was an old ghost town looking place nestled in the arid valley of the Sierra Nevadas. Real dusty and a little run down. Clearly, its glory days were behind it. Shane was used to that. He and Maxine went to the sort of places folks didn't usually visit. They'd spent the last few years in whatever swamp or backwoods their work took them to next. But Shane would follow Maxine to the ends of nowhere. The two had met five years ago. Maxine was Shane's hairstylist. But when he first walked into that salon, you couldn't have convinced that man he was looking at a purple-haired angel. He was too shy to ask her out, so every few weeks he kept coming back. He got a trim up, then a bleach, then a buzz. He was running out of money and hair, and he still hadn't worked up the courage when Max beat him to the punch. Their first date was at an old drive-in theater to see the original Wolfman. That's when he learned Max loved monsters, and Shane realized he loved Max. They fell hard after that, and in their time together, Max got Shane into monsters too. So when she proposed the idea of actually looking for them, Shane agreed. Two years later, their online following grew so much 
they quit their day jobs. And on a trip to the annual Mothman Festival, Shane asked Max to marry him. But being business partners was a hell of a lot different than being lovers. Now, they weren't just out there for the fun of it. They had their sponsors and a ravenous following to keep happy. Shane checked his phone and was inundated by a barrage of likes, hearts, and comments from their channels. He grinned. It was hard not to feel good when thousands of strangers showered you with digital love bombs. And the more their following grew, the more he needed them. Their validation, affirmation, community. The numbers became everything to him. And after today, they were going to skyrocket. Maxine pulled out the monster machine, their tricked-out passenger van, into the parking lot of a local tavern. Inside, sitting at the bar was Hugo, their interview subject. Hugo was an older guy, bearded and bespectacled, with a turquoise bolo tie over his plaid shirt. The couple knew his type well, fellows who considered themselves the informal historians of their little-known towns. Maxine chatted him up while Shane set up their equipment. As always, she'd done her creature research, but she'd had a hard time finding much on their current subject, the Lone Pine Mountain Devil. You see, this thing's elusive. There are no photos, no video evidence. Some say it's a relic of the dinosaur age, or demon straight from the depths of hell. And some claim it's nothing but a hoax. But that's where Hugo came in, because this guy was a Lone Pine Mountain Devil believer. As soon as Shane hit record, Max launched into it. She began by introducing the devil, then handed it over to Hugo. The old-timer described its four bat-like wings and rows of fangs. It was a real apex predator, he explained. It could hunt anything. Bobcats, coyotes. He'd even come across a mountain lion it killed once. Maxine leaned in. If he hadn't seen it himself, she asked, how could he be sure that it was the mountain devil that killed these animals? and not say another mountain lion. Because, Hugo paused, I've never heard of mountain lions eating just the faces. It was just after noon when they rode out of town toward the hills. Shane typed out a reminder for their fans. Monster Max's very first live stream tonight. Be there or be monster meat. Shane sent off the promo. They were up a few thousand followers, their biggest jump in a day ever. He whooped and showed Max the phone. They were finally going to break 500,000. Max smiled, a smile Shane knew was only for his benefit. Then she chewed her bottom lip, an anxious tick. What's wrong, Shane asked. This was a good thing. It was huge. Max pulled over the van. When she raised her sunglasses, there were tears in her eyes. Shane's heart sank. She told Shane she had been thinking about it for a while and she wanted to put Monster Max on hiatus, maybe permanently. She also wanted to put their engagement on pause. Max grabbed his hand. She still loved him, she said, but they had to do this for both of them. Shane sat for a moment, stunned. Then the anger took over. He shook off Max's hands and told her this was bullshit. They were so close to reaching their goal, and she wanted to give up on their livelihood and their relationship. And for what? It was insane, he spat. And it wasn't lost on him that this was happening now that he was a co-host. Maxine's face fell. That, she said with disgust, was exactly why. Nothing mattered to him anymore but the opinions of some anonymous mass. They'd created something that was starting to destroy them. Then she began to sob. Whatever self-righteous anger Shane felt was gone in an instant. He pulled her close and apologized. She was right, he said. He'd gotten carried away, and as soon as they left Lone Pine, he promised, they'd figure things out. Maxine wiped away tears. Okay, she said. They'd finish the Mountain Devil, then no more. Shane smiled and kissed her, half out of love, half out of relief, because he was sure that after the success of tonight's video, Max would realize they couldn't walk away and go back to dead-end jobs. Not when they'd finally built their empire. And at that point, he would do better too, for her. But if Max still wanted to talk, well, Shane didn't want to think about it, but maybe, maybe it was high time he went solo. 
It was well into the afternoon as the monster machine wound its way through the dusty roads towards the Mountain Devil's alleged location. Their argument had set them back and Max was worried about time. Shane reassured her that they'd be fine when, as if to spite him, the van hit an impasse. Up ahead, the road dwindled to a narrow trail. Too narrow to drive any further, they'd have to hoof it. Minutes later, they ditched the van and were hiking their gear up the trail. And as they walked further, Shane was glad they didn't ditch the equipment too. They were hiking in some of the most gorgeous, bizarre-looking landscape he'd ever seen. Massive stone arches hovered over the desert, along a series of spire-like formations. It was like standing in a cathedral of rocks, the perfect opportunity for a drone shot. He stopped to set up his gear. Max sighed. They had to keep moving. Shane didn't want another argument, pick your battles and all that. But just then, a strange cry cut through the desert. A coyote, then another, and another, howled unseen from the rocks, too close for comfort. They seemed to come from every direction surrounding Shane and Max in a haunting, screeching chorus. The pair stood frozen until the cries faded. Max looked at Shane. If that wasn't a sign to keep moving, she didn't know what was. They walked for the next hour, scanning the landscape for any sign of a winged monster from hell. But the desert was empty and eerily quiet. As they snaked their way through jutting rocks and looming archways, Shane couldn't shake the feeling that they were trudging toward the jaws of some great stone monster. It was dusk now, and the sky had faded to that last deep shade of blue before true night. Time had gotten away from them, and so had the trail. Shane snatched his phone from his pocket. They still had service. Barely, but it was there. With his signal boosters, they should be able to complete the stream and GPS their way back. He put his phone away, relieved, when the hair prickled on the back of his neck. You know that distinct yet inexplicable sensation when you think you're alone, but suddenly know you're not? Yeah, that's exactly what Shane was feeling. That's when a large rustle came from the brush. He stopped in his tracks and Max turned to him. It was so quiet, Shane could hear the blood pumping through his body. His palms began to sweat, and he immediately thought of the pistol in his pack. He'd never used it, never had to, but now he really wished he had it in reach. His hand slowly crept to his pack. A large, muscular form shot from the grass and landed on the path on all fours. A mountain lion. It was crouched in front of them, like a linebacker muscles tensed, eyes wild. It hissed. Shane's mind raced, trying to retrieve from the archives in his brain the protocol for mountain lions. Did they run? Scream? Behind him, Maxine answered, don't turn your back on it and look big. Shane stood up taller, his body trembling, but before he could wave his arms in his best impression of some large, more dangerous predator, he noticed something. The mountain lion was panting. Its mouth was open, powerful chest heaving. And that wild look in its eyes? Shane recognized it now. It was fear. The lion stared past Shane and Max. And with a last panic glance, it turned around and ran in the other direction. Shane and Max caught their breath and hugged in relief. But as Maxine drew back, she asked him the question he'd been asking himself. What was it running from? He didn't know, but whatever it was, they were headed in the right direction. After their run-in with the mountain lion, Shane moved his pistol within easy reach. There were no guarantees they'd be lucky a second time. They didn't know where they were going exactly but something was propelling them forward. After years of tracking cryptids, they'd gotten used to tapping into that feeling. As they walked on, the sky darkened until stars winked into existence. All around them, the heavens swirled with constellations. Do you smell that? Maxine asked. Shane didn't smell anything, but a minute later, it hit his nostrils. Something sharp, rancid. 
In a few steps, they both heard the unmistakable buzz of flies. They followed the sound off the trail, but it was too dark to see in the brush. Shane switched on his flashlight and gagged. Lying there, in the dirt, was a gray fox, or what was left of it. The animal had been mutilated so severely it looked deformed. Its four legs lay bent at unnatural angles, but otherwise untouched. Same with the chest. The rest of the body, however, was a different story. Its belly wasn't so much gutted as hollowed out. But its face, its face was the worst part. The cartilage, the eyes, every tender bit of flesh had been peeled away. It looked as if it had been skinned alive. Shane whipped out the infrared camera and started filming. Max began chewing her lip again. She had a bad feeling, she said. They'd seen dead animals before, but this, this was different. Her voice trembled. I don't think we should be here. Shane stopped recording. They used to joke that despite his stint in the military, Maxine was the brave one. But she seemed actually scared. Shane got up and put his hands on her shoulders. They were so close, he assured her. It was just a bad feeling. It'd go away. Max shook her head. No, they should go back. Shane couldn't let that happen. They didn't come this far to turn around with nothing, especially when he knew they were so close to something good. He spoke gently, telling Max they'd go just a little farther and see what they found. And no matter what, even if it was nothing, they'd just do the live stream and hightail it out. Seeing the resistance in her eyes, he pleaded. She'd promised him, he reminded her. Just like he promised her, that after this search, they'd take a break. Finally, she nodded. Okay, she said. One more mile, then we're gone. After leaving the fox corpse behind, it became clear that they wouldn't have to go far, because soon they stumbled on another carcass, a jackrabbit, mutilated in the same way. And after that, they found another, and another. They followed the corpses like a gruesome trail of breadcrumbs until they came across the largest one yet, a bighorn sheep. But as they came closer, they had realized it wasn't a corpse at all, because somehow the poor creature was still alive. Entrail spilled out of its open belly, still glistening with fresh blood. And its face, you already know, it didn't have one. And yet, it kept on breathing its chest heaving with each gasp. As they approached, what was left of its mouth jerked open to release the most agonizing sound Shane had ever heard. Half cry, half moan. Maxine looked at Shane, horrified. We can't leave it like this, she muttered. But Shane couldn't look away from the dying sheep. A corpse was one thing, but this. It was like his brain couldn't process the horror his eyes were taking in. Give me the gun, she said. The sheep groaned in pain. Give it to me, she demanded. Without thinking, he handed her the pistol from his pack. Max stood back, aimed with both hands, and fired. The crack of the pistol echoed through the desert. The sheep jerked, then lay silent. As she handed the pistol back, there were tears in her eyes. She looked at Chain. I hope you do the same for me. Before he could reply, an ear-splitting shriek cut through the night. The cry echoed and faded. It wasn't the sound of any animal they'd heard before. It was something not of this world. Shane grinned at Maxine. I think we found our devil. The pair sprung into action. They gathered their packs and moved swiftly towards that strange, otherworldly sound. Now I know what you're thinking. After seeing those poor skinned up animals, why are these fools getting closer? Name of the show is Run Fool, and at this point they should run. But they didn't. Remember, the Monster Max duo were professionals, or at least as professional as one can get tracking down monsters of dubious existence. When they heard a strange, mysterious cry, they followed. And as for Shane, he'd run towards almost anything if it meant more followers. As they made their way through the boulders and brush, they heard it again, louder this time. They were close. There, in the highest branches of the farthest tree, they could see a strange shadow. 
It was too massive to be any bird of prey and the wrong shape. It had to be it, the mountain devil. Maxine stared at the figure warily, then nodded to Shane. They'd set up here. Shane rummaged through the pack, assembling his rig as fast as he ever had. He held his breath as his phone searched for Wi-Fi, then exhaled. They were online. He straightened up, then hit record. Welcome, skeptics and believers, to Monster Max, he announced in his loudest, quietest voice. We're about to meet the Lone Pine Mountain Devil. And for the first time ever, you're going to see it all right here, right now, live. Viewers trickled in and Shane turned the camera to Max. Just like that, the anxious Maxine from the last hour was gone, and her monster Max persona took over. In hushed tones, Max explained to the viewers where they were and the grisly trail of bodies they'd followed to get there. Shane loved watching her through the camera. She was confident and animated. It was like he'd resurrected the woman he fell in love with. He watched the viewer count tick higher. They were well into the thousands now. The screen was a cascade of likes, hearts, and comments. Shane smiled. They were doing it. On camera, Maxine pointed to the distant shadow, the alleged mountain devil. A wave of comments came on screen. Where? The messages read. I can't see anything. Get closer. Dozens echoed this request, demanding a better look. All the while, Shane watched the viewer count grow. Over 10,000 people were watching now. Without thinking, Shane announced, We're moving closer. Max froze, shooting him a look of disbelief. Shane gave her a nod and raised the pistol in his hand. It was fine, he was trying to tell her. He had her back. Finally, she crept forward. Shane followed. They were maybe a hundred feet away now, so close Shane could make out the creature silhouetted in the tree. It was huge, the size of a horse, but with a long reptilian-like tail. And based on the folded wings at its side, he could tell it was turned away. Thank God. But that didn't keep his heart from pounding. Maxine crouched in the brush, speaking softly into her microphone. What you're seeing is the first and only recording of the Lone Pine Mountain Devil, and you're witnessing it live. Shane watched the viewer count soar. 30,000, 35,000. The world was watching. They were becoming legends in real time. He couldn't tell if he was shaking from fear or pride. A demonic scream split the night. Shane looked up to see the mountain devil's head reared back. Comments flooded the live feed, pouring in faster than Shane could read. Just then, he checked their follower count. 550,000. They'd done it. Maxine gave Shane an urgent look. It was time to get the hell out. Her voice shook as she closed out the stream. Thanks for joining us on this special live hunt. And be sure to like and... Another blood-curdling shriek cut Maxine off. Shane looked up just in time to see the horrific silhouette of the devil's monstrous extended wings. Then... It took flight. There was a gust of wind and dust. Then Maxine screamed. Shane jumped to his feet, dropping the camera rig. The creature swooped in, hovering over her so close its wings brushed the ground. Max swung her pack wildly, fighting for her life. Shoot it, she screamed to Shane. Shoot it. Shane fumbled for his pistol, then fired. It nicked the devil's wing. He shot again, this time hitting its shoulder. The beast turned around, locking eyes on Shane, and lunged. Shane was thrown to the ground. The gun flew from his grip and skidded into the brush. The devil loomed over him. Out of the shadows, it was more horrifying than he'd imagined. It stood on four thick, gnarled talons with two sets of leathered wings sprouting from its shoulders. They unfurled, the spiny flesh quivering, but its head was the stuff of nightmares, massive with a snub bat nose, and above it, two eyes like pitch-black pools. Shame was drowning in its gaze, when the devil reared back, revealing a jaw rimmed with layers of razor teeth. Run, Max screamed. At the sound of her voice, the devil turned around and loped towards her, Shane jumped to his feet and rushed toward Max, grabbing her hand. The two ran faster than they'd ever run, weaving through boulders and dodging roots and rocks. The mountain devil's wound seemed to slow it down. Within seconds, Max and Shane managed to put a small distance between themselves and the monster. 
but the devil's ear-splitting screams reminded them it wasn't far behind. They flew through the desert, the rough brush whipping at their legs when Maxine's foot caught on a rock and she hit the ground. Shane stopped in his tracks looking back. Come on, he shouted. Get up! Maxine struggled to her feet but immediately collapsed. Something was wrong with her ankle. Behind her, the mountain devil was quickly closing the distance. Max looked at him, her eyes full of terror. Shane, she began to say, before the beast descended on her. Max screamed as the devil's talon sliced through her stomach. Shane stood yards away, frozen. Maxine's agonized cries turned into one word over and over. His name, Shane. She was calling to him, but as the love of his life was torn open, all he could do was watch until Max's warm blood splattered against his skin. Then Shane turned around and ran. Still, she called after him, but Shane kept on running until he couldn't hear her screaming. But the horror wasn't over, because soon Shane would learn that much like the bloodthirsty beast, fate has a way of hunting you down. But to hear more about that, you'll have to wait for the next episode of Run Fool.